Hello and welcome back to the ninth episode of How to Play Paragon. Today we're going to be looking at the carry roll, which is the counterpart to the support tutorial which I did previously. And as usual, the first part of call is thinking about what kind of hero you're going to be playing and what kind of deck you have ready for that hero. All carry heroes do the same thing throughout the match, which is farm to get stronger. However, their kits are very much different and they allow you to do very different styles of play. The same can be said for decks. Every single person's deck will most likely be different unless they've copied it from the same place. If you're new to deck building, I would recommend copying it from someone. However, if you are not new to deck building, I would definitely recommend making your own deck as it's very much tailored to you, you know how it works and why it works. Knowing the ins and outs of both your hero and your deck is the difference between an okay and a great carry player. Knowing both of these will allow you to know when your power spikes are going to happen and then allow you to hopefully pick up some kills when it does happen because your enemy will be overwhelmed by the amount of damage you've just gained. Now I'm going to be talking about farming and lane pressure within the lane. Now if you watch my support tutorial, it's pretty much the opposite of what I was saying in that. You will be last hitting while the support goes off and tries to body block the enemy out of XP and card XP range. This will hopefully deny them the advantage of being levels ahead because you're sharing XP with your support. But on top of this, it may even open up positions where you may be able to try and get a kill. Though do remember if you hit an enemy near the enemy minions, the minions will then try and aggro onto you, so don't take any damage that you don't need to. And even if you can't pick up that kill, it doesn't matter, they're probably going to back and they'll lose out on card XP and XP, you can just push it to tower and then they will lose even more because the tower will be killing them while they're coming back to lane. And this is probably worth mentioning now, when you've pushed the minions to their tower, later on in the game you probably want to get your support and you to go do the gold buff. The gold buff is very much worth getting, it gives you bonus card XP every time you get a last hit, so as long as you're hitting those last hits you'll be getting a lot of bonus card XP. The one time you don't want to be doing gold buff however, is when the minions are pushing towards you and there's an enemy in the lane. If he can sneak up and see you doing it, he may be able to actually steal the buff from you. And really this is all there is to know about farming in the safe lane. You should be farming the majority of the time, trading damage if your support can line it up for you, as well as trying to get the gold buff when possible if you've forced your laner to leave, or you've just pushed them to tower. We're now going to be talking about warding as a carry. Now a lot of the carries I see don't ward, however I personally like to, so I'm going to show you these areas where I like to ward. You can ward here to control part of the river, you can also ward in the usual places that I showed in the support tutorial, or apparently you can't do it in this tree. Or if you've got good communication with your jungler, you could explain to them that you're going to ward inside the enemy jungle, you can hide it in that tree as well. Or you can just put it behind this fog wall so you know when they're running through from the mid lane. Or you can stick it on here so you can see the old prime when that comes up. If your game's not going too well for your jungler or you keep getting invaded, you can however also put them a nice little ward inside your own jungle. I quite like putting it on these steps because it covers quite a nice area. But ideally you want to help with the warding. The next thing I want to talk about is roaming. When should you roam and how should you roam? The answer to that is, if you've got wards up and you can see they have no wards in the river, then you could probably start heading to mid lane after you've taken the tower. The only time that you shouldn't roam is if they're massively ahead or you don't know if you'll be able to actually catch them out. The best time to roam is usually straight after taking the enemy tower and they've gone back and you could actually force down their tower or get a kill. The last thing you want to do is leave your laner to push back your lane and then take your tower while you're trying to get a kill in the mid lane or trying to take a tower in the mid lane. Though linking this back to the farming section, this will completely depend on how well you've been able to farm. If you've been farming really well and your damage output is great, then you'll probably be able to kill them rather quick in the mid lane. However, you may miss out on a kill if you've not been farming too great. If your farm's not been going too great, the alternative is to let your support roam while you stay in the lane to defend it from the enemy laner. This equals it out, you'll be getting more XP than you were before, allowing you to gain levels much more quickly, allowing you to also gain more damage quickly due to the leveling up of abilities. But it should also benefit your team, if there's any other lanes that do require help, your support will then be able to lend it to them. And it then forces the enemy team to also try and move around and change formation, due to the fact that there'll be more power moving into different lanes. The aim of roaming as a carry though, is to basically pressure different lanes and force people to come to one specific lane. If you're ahead, this will greatly benefit you, as you'll be in a much better position to team fight. And that brings me to the question of, what is your role in a team fight as a carry? And honestly, the key element in a team fight for any carry is positioning. If you get caught out, that team fight is probably going to be lost if they focus you correctly. 
trying to keep our abilities in CC range while at the same time maintaining a distance to be able to auto attack people is key to you being a good carry. You should basically be barely within auto attack range while at the same time staying far away enough so that you don't get CC'd. Moving on from that you should then be able to prioritise a target. This is usually the enemy carry or the enemy caster, though if you're forced to deal with someone who's constantly running at you then that may have to be a thing you do. If your team's not keeping away the enemy tanks from you then you need to deal with those because otherwise you're probably going to die to them before you do any damage. Though all being well what you'll want to do is just focus one particular person, whether that be the mid laner, the off laner or the carry, depending on who's closest and who's within range just do as much damage over the shortest amount of time possible. However, within a team fight, you should always try and save your escape ability for when you really need it the most. There's always going to be that one time where you've used it to try and get closer to someone and someone's appeared that you didn't expect to be there, and then you'll probably die because you don't have any escape left. However, if you've just finished a team fight, come out on top quite well, you can always use it to close the gap on that person, because then you'll be able to probably pick up a kill and win the fight. I know that's a rather thin line to draw, but it's just how the game plays out sometimes. I'm now going to summarise what we've been talking about in this video. Hero and deck choice is very important as the carry. Your role is to be the power within the team and you also have to know very good positioning with that hero, how they work, their ranges and the best way to do damage with them. Once you get to lane, you want to farm as much as possible to the best of your ability. Your support should be trying to keep the enemy out of range of the card XP and XP. This allows you to farm safely while at the same time doing a bit of harass to the enemy if he comes close. You should be roaming once you've taken tower if you're ahead, if not try and farm up a little bit more until you catch up to the other carry. And now for your role within teamfights. Your role within teamfights is to basically be the DPS. And what I mean by that is every other role will probably use a lot more mana than you to do that amount of damage over that amount of time. Your role is to stay alive and keep harassing the enemy and keep pushing them in fights, while staying at a safe distance allowing you to do maximum damage with least damage taken. The once you've killed a few of the enemies, don't be scared to get a little bit more aggressive. And that pretty much sums it up for the carry roll. If you like this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. And if you really like me, give me a subscribe. And I hope to see you here for the next tutorial.